Well, good evening. I'm glad that you're with us to, for tonight's prayer meeting and Bible study. What an exciting time this is, and uh, I'm thankful that you're worshiping with us tonight. If you would, join me in a word of prayer as we begin. Father, we thank you so much for this night in which you've given to us. There are many on our prayer list and on our heart tonight. Father, I pray, Lord, for, uh, for those individuals that have loved ones with uh, the COVID virus. Father, with many other things, even this week, so many have shared with me that they're dealing with cancer and other illness. Father, we pray that the hand of the great physician would be upon them. Father, I pray tonight for our church. I pray for the churches in this area. And Father, I pray for churches across this world. Father, help us to keep the gospel forefront and may we share it with all that we come in contact with. Father, I pray tonight for the wonderful message from your word from the book of Ruth. May your blessing be upon all that's said and done here tonight. We pray this in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. turning. than our sin. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Longing 
to see his face will you this moment his grace receive grace grace god's grace grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace grace god's grace grace that is great Well, tonight for our prayer time, I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Gary Gaskell to come. We've already voted on him to come on as one of our elders or pastors here at the church in discipleship. And I'm going to ask him if he would. Uh, we need to pray about discipleship. Next Wednesday night, uh, we're going to have an ordination service for Brother Gary. I'm so thankful for him. Gary, come and lead us in prayer if you would. Let's pray. Father God, we do praise and worship you and thank you for this beautiful day. Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity to be in your house to worship you, to praise your holy name, to lift you up high and mighty. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to pray for our brothers and sisters. Father, I pray tonight for the lost. Father, I pray that tonight, Father, that you will embolden us as a church, your people, Father, to get busy doing your work. Father, we are all called to be disciples for Christ. Help us to be busy making disciples. The commandment was given by the Lord Jesus Christ himself, and we are to follow it and obey it. May each of us do our own as we leave here tonight, Father, and I just pray that you will embolden us again, give us the courage and strength to endure. Father, I pray tonight for those who are struggling, either in the hospital, uh, Father, at home, uh, they may be sick with cancer or um, with COVID or whatever the ailment, Father. I pray for your healing to be upon them. Father, I pray for intimacy and closeness with you. Father, I pray that you will draw near to them, that they may feel your presence in their life. Father, I pray that you will be with those as they recover. And Father, in, in, in mindful, being mindful of those who are recovering, we praise you for that. We see your mighty work and your mighty hand, Father, and we thank you for that. Father, we pray for healing for those who need it, Father. And again, we just uh, we love you and we praise you for them. Father, we ask that you be with our, our leadership, both at, our, at the uh, state, federal, and local level, Father. We pray for your guidance and direction in their decision-making, Father. We pray that uh, they will be discipled by Christians, Father, that they will come beside them and mentor them and lead them and help them in their decision-making, Father that you will be glorified and that you will um, be once again the focus of our nation. Father, I ask that you be with our first responders. I ask that you keep them safe and well, Father. We thank you for the job that they perform here in the community, Father, and we do pray your blessing upon them. Father, last, I pray for the church. Father, I pray that we remain the door of open church. Father, I, I pray that our doors will all be, always be welcome, not only for the believer, but for the lost. May we always welcome them. May we always witness to them. And may we always be ready to disciple them. Father, I pray for strength in the church. I pray for courage. I pray for comfort. Father, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power and of love and of a sound mind. Father, we love you and praise you and ask all of these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight we are going to continue with this series from the book of Ruth, The Unexpected Kindness of God. And as I began this series, I shared that the book of Ruth is a love story. And as we see from our graphic, it is a story of redemption. Tonight we're going to look at this message entitled, Remaining in a Field of Grace, we're going to go back to chapter 2, verses 21 through 23. If you would, stand with me in honor of God's Word. Those of you at home, look on with me on the screen as we put these verses up for you to read. And Ruth, the Moabitess, said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. 
And Naomi said unto her, unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. Verse 23. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of the barley harvest and of the wheat harvest, and dwelt with her mother-in-law. What we see here is Ruth is a person with stick to Y'all know what stick to is? Uh, when she's made a commitment, she's going to stick with it. Let's pray together. Father, I pray that as we read this passage and see the wonderful grace that is given to Ruth, how it is symbolic of the grace that you have bestowed to us. Help us to be faithful, to stick to those things that we are called to do. Father, there's always those uh, fleeting uh, enticements to, to do something else, to go somewhere else. Father, I pray that we would stay with the work of working in your field, sharing the gospel, and serving you in your church. And I pray this in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, Ruth has been gleaning in the fields of Boaz. <laughs> and, and when she started gleaning, she wasn't expecting a whole lot, but but, but when she went and found the grace in these fields, well, she went home with a lot more than she ever expected. Not only that, but she also caught the eye of a wealthy field owner named Boaz. He was working things out so that she had more than enough for herself and also for Naomi who she was caring for. And so now we see in this passage that she leaves with instructions to remain in his field. Boaz does not want her gleaning in somebody else's field. He wants her to stick to it right there in his fields. Not only that, but we see that Boaz is falling in love with Ruth and he desires to get to know her better. Uh, what he really wants is a personal relationship with her. He, he doesn't want to use her. He doesn't want to abuse her. He wants to have a real relationship with her. I'm so grateful because what we see here is symbolic of the relationship that Jesus wants with each and every one of us. Uh, listen, when we follow Christ... Let me be honest, there could be hard times that come by standing for our witness. And there will be hard times because in this world we will have tribulation, but we are told to be of good cheer, for he's overcome the world. And we know that this world is not all there is. Christians throughout the ages, even in the New Testament, Jesus warned us there would be times of persecution, but we need to stick to the stuff because Listen, the grace that we receive is much greater than anything that's in the world. Aren't you grateful that how these verses, we see a portrait of how the Lord works with people and how Jesus loves people. And if you're here tonight, you're watching online, listen again, God loves you. And he expressed that love in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the ultimate revelation of the love of God because Jesus took upon himself the sin of the world. He died for our sin. He paid our penalty so we could have eternal life and he could have a personal relationship with us and we could have a personal relationship with him. And like Boaz, <laughs> Jesus has a great field. And he offers it to us. And he wants us to remain in it. He'll never force us. We have a free will to choose the Lord or reject the Lord. The Bible makes it very clear that whosoever will 
may come into God's field of grace. Well, let's quickly look at three points. First of all, Ruth is invited to remain in the field. Notice what it says in verse 21. Thou shalt keep fast. That means you need to just stay put right here. <laughs> this was a personal invitation. Ruth said, he said unto me. That's how she expressed it to Naomi. In other words, he talked directly to me. He had a message for me. Listen, I will never forget when I felt the Lord speaking to my heart. Has he spoken to your heart? Did you hear the call to receive the Lord from the Holy Spirit? I'll never forget the day I walked down the aisle. I'll remember what the pastor used as his closing verse. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him. Listen, I was hearing that knock. I knew that God was calling me, and I knew that I needed to get up. I knew that I needed to go. I knew that I needed to receive the Lord. And it could be that just hearing those words, God loves you. You know that he's calling you. You have a personal invitation. Listen, Jesus is interested in a personal relationship with each one of us. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, also, this was a precise invitation. Boaz told Ruth exactly what it was she was supposed to do. Abide in my field. You know, our Lord and Savior Jesus gives us precise instructions, not only on how we can obtain His grace, but how we can stay in His field of grace. The Word of God tells us how to get right, how to stay right as well. Romans 10, 9 is a precise invitation to accept the Lord and receive eternal life. Listen to what it says. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What a precise invitation. Well, not only that, it's a promising invitation. Our text says, until they have ended all my harvest. In other words, Boaz wants Ruth to stay in the field of grace, in his field, until all the work of the harvest is done. And again, notice, Naomi's not been going out to the field. It's been Ruth going. Ruth stays close to Naomi. She's been gleaning and taking care of Naomi. I like that, don't you? Somebody that has stick to itiveness. Listen, that's important in our lives. You know, things are going to go wrong in a marriage relationship. But if it's going to survive, it's going to take stick to itiveness. And I, I, I'm just going to share. It's not in my notes, but Donna's here. This is, this is true. Listen, there have been times when the thing that has kept us together is our love for the Lord. You know, the closer you get to the Lord, the closer you get to one another. You know, the same is true in a church family. There are times when we as people might get out of sorts, but the closer we get to the Lord, the closer we will come to one another. The secret is making sure that we're moving closer to the Lord. Listen, that's what we need to do. I can tell you that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wants us to Always stay in his fields, and he will never abandon us. Listen, I'm so thankful that Jesus said, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. In John chapter 6, verse 37. So first we saw uh, she is invited to remain. And now we see how she is instructed to remain in the field of grace. But then we also see that 
that she is instructed to remain in verse 22. Meet thee not in any other field. You see, the character of the field. Ruth is told it is good. Listen, this has been a good field. It's been proven to be good. It is a promising field. And it is a productive field as well. And Naomi says to Ruth, don't go somewhere else. Listen, as pastor, how I'd like to tell people, don't go somewhere else. Don't leave where you are with the Lord. Don't walk away from God. I know there are hard times that come that cause people to want to give up on the Lord. I've seen people get mad at God and say, why did God let this happen? Listen, I keep reminding people that it's the devil that brings death and destruction into the world. It's the thief. Listen, the devil is a liar and he is a killer. And when we think about COVID-19, when we think about cancer, when we think about accidents, just remember that it is the devil that brings death and destruction. Jesus came so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. And I say it over and over again, when bad things happen, don't blame God. Blame the devil. Amen? But what this world does is they take the name of God in vain. They blame God for evil. Listen, blame the devil. Because it is very clear that he's the one that brought temptation into the Garden of Eden. He's the one that brought death and destruction. And he continues today. And let me say this about what's going on in America right now. What's going on in our world. The farther you move away from God, the more you get out away from God's protective hand. And the devil will use every opportunity to kill and destroy. And we see that going on around this world. Listen, we need to get back into the field of the Lord, especially Christian. Christian, listen to me. We need to get close to God. We need to get close to the Lord. And we need to invite others to come into the field of grace as well. Well, let's look at the completeness of the field because in the field of grace, Ruth found peace and safety and security and hope refreshment, relationship, goodness, kindness, and blessing. Remember how he gave instructions that no one was to harm Ruth, harass her in any way. Listen, I want you to know, God will take care of you. Well, our Lord Jesus has provided the grace of God to all those that will accept him. And I, I know I use this illustration over and over again, but it meant so much to me. When my wife had cancer, her hair had fallen out, her eyelashes were gone, but yet she got up to sing, and she would say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. She boldly proclaims she wins either way. You know, that same thing can be said to about each and every one of us. None of us are getting out of this world alive, physically. This old body is not going to make it to heaven. We need a new body, amen? amen? Some of us are needing a new body more than other people, but we need a new body. To live is Christ. But don't forget this, believer, If you know Jesus Christ, to die is gain. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. That's what the Word of God teaches. Well, third, Ruth is inclined to remain. She makes a decision. She's going to stay faithful. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean. Hers was a continual work. Listen, she was going to work in the field. Some people think that because they've accepted Christ, why, they don't need to do any work. (laughs) You got the wrong idea. When you accept Christ, you came to work. You finally found out what the real work was all about. The real purpose in living is to do God's will for the believer. 
And for those outside of Christ, if they really want fulfillment, listen, if you're looking for fulfillment, come to Christ and do His will. And you'll find the fulfillment that the world will never give. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ expects all of His people to faithfully work in His field. I can tell you, Jesus wants us to work in His field every day. One of my favorite verses of Scripture is Ephesians chapter 2. Let me read Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. And then verse 10, so often we leave it out. For we are His workmanship created unto Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You see, we were saved to work for the Lord. Did you hear that? Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We were created unto good works. We're not saved by good works. But if you're saved, you were saved unto good works for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, hers was also a completed work. What do I mean by that? Well, she was to glean to the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. Friend, you don't retire from serving the Lord. If you're still breathing, if you still have life, then you are called to continue serving the Lord until the end of the harvest. And there will come an end of the harvest. There is coming a day when that shout will come from heaven. There will be a trump of the archangel. And the dead in Christ will rise and those of us who are alive will be caught up with them to be with the Lord. But until that time, we need to serve the Lord. Amen, church? Amen, Amen, church? We need to serve Christ. Don't give up. Don't quit on the Lord. Because Jesus... Never quit on us. Well, God's people are to remain faithful to the instructions of God. When we accept His invitation to enter His field of grace, then we made a commitment as well. We made a commitment of our life that we would serve the Lord. That word Lord means boss, master, ruler, king. Is He really your king? Oh, listen, don't judge yourself by your words. Judge yourself by your actions. Is he really your king, Lord, master? Are you really serving him? We are called to continue in his field, to not quit, to have that stick to If you're not saved, did you hear the invitation of God's love? Would you come? Whosoever will may come. Would you come to him? It could be that you've strayed. You've allowed the pressures of the world. You've allowed the the difficulties you might be going through to draw you away from doing what you know you need to do for the Lord. If you've strayed, maybe you need to get something right tonight. God has been so good. Listen, I don't want you to respond out of guilt, although conviction's a good thing. But would you respond to the love of God? He's given us so much. He deserves our service, our love, our work, our devotion. If you need to come to Him tonight, I invite you to come to the Lord. If tonight God has shown you that you're lost and that you need to receive Jesus, there's good news in God's field of grace. Whosoever will may come. I'm going to ask every head be bowed and every eye closed. Father, I pray for us tonight. And Father, I pray that if there's someone tonight that needs to receive the Lord, Father, I pray that this would be the night. Now, with your head bowed and your eyes closed, those of you at home, you're looking at that prayer. It simply says, Dear God, I know that Jesus is your Son, 
and that he died on the cross and was raised from the dead. I know that I have sinned and need forgiveness. I am willing to turn from my sin and receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Looking at that prayer, would you pray your own prayer right now? Cry out from your own heart, asking the Lord to save you, to come into your heart. Would you pray and ask the Lord to save you tonight? to forgive you of your sin? Would you commit to live for him? Father, I pray for us tonight that if there's somebody, they, they called out to you tonight. They are coming to receive you as Lord and Savior. They believe that you died on the cross for them and rose from the grave victoriously. And now they're willing to ask you to come into their heart, into their life as Lord and Savior, Father, I pray that tonight they would let that be known. Father, there may be believers tonight. They need to make a commitment. They have strayed away from serving you. Father, they've let COVID be an excuse not to get on the phone, not to make a call, not to send an email or a text. And Father, for others that are out and about, they've allowed COVID to keep them from sharing the gospel and talking about you. Father, this is a time we need to be talking about you even more and inviting others to either watch online or to come. Well, if you just made that commitment, you prayed that prayer, would you call me right now? Listen, I believe that real commitments are borne out by our public proclamation. And I know you can't come forward when you're at home watching online, on a TV or computer, but you can call. Call me right now, 904-226-5547. You can also email me at Doug at Uly Baptist. And for the many of you that call each week, that call regularly, or maybe you've never called, I just want to thank you for sharing with me. Thank you for calling with your prayer request as well. It's a whole lot easier for you to call your pastor than for me to find out through the grapevine. Thank you again for responding and uh, using that phone number, that email address, and staying in touch. God bless you, and uh, have a great week. We'll see you Sunday.